Okay, in this video, I'll be talking through something that we've already practiced a little bit without having given it a label, which is putting arguments into standard form. A standard form summary is basically a list of the uh, claims in an argument uh, ordered so that the premises are listed above the conclusions that they support. And another part of what makes a standard form summary a standard form summary is that the premises and the conclusions need to be um, labeled and marked somehow so that it's easy to talk about premise one or premise two to be able to distinguish them. Uh, it's easy to identify the, the claims that are serving as premises versus the claims that are serving as conclusions. So um, that listing of claims and the labeling of the claims as premises and conclusions um, and the listing of them in order where the premises are always above the conclusions that they support. Uh, is what makes a uh, summary of an argument a summary in standard form. So you'll see here with this example, um, the standard form summary is very similar to the expression of the argument that you've seen before in a previous uh, video. Uh, here I've just I've given the kind of simple labeling P1 for premise 1, P2 for premise 2, and C for conclusion. Alternatively, you can just number each of the claims, one, two, three, four, five, etc. cetera. Um, but there you need to somehow still indicate that um, some of the claims are conclusions, where, uh, whereas others are premises. And a easy way to do that is to add the word therefore to the conclusions. We're gonna see more techniques for labeling premises and conclusions and for um, highlighting how uh, premises support their conclusions when we're summarizing and analyzing arguments. We're going to get some more techniques for doing that. So for now, I just want you to see that there are um, a few very similar, closely related ways of, uh, of summarizing arguments that count as standard form summaries. So I'm giving you sort of two versions, a regular version and an alternate version. They both basically do the same thing. And in the slides and examples that I look at, sometimes I'll use the one version, sometimes I'll use the other, it doesn't matter. Um, uh, I hope that it, it's easy for you to see that they're structurally parallel, they're doing the same thing, okay? So let's practice this a little bit. Um, in a moment, I'll ask you to pause the slide and put B into standard form in the way that I just put the previous two arguments into standard form. Okay, so what you want to do is you want to identify all the claims in the uh, in the passage, all the all the claims in the argument, and you want to list the supporting claims above the supported claims. So you want to list the premises above the conclusions that they support. And again, I'll give you a clue. In this argument, there's just one conclusion. Okay, so um, you want to put whatever the conclusion of the argument is at the bottom and label it as a C. Uh, and you want to put the other um, claims above it and label them as premises. So go ahead and pause the video and do that, and then I'll give you the right answer when you start the video again. Okay, I think that this is the right answer. So the conclusion of this argument is pretty clearly the first sentence. You should wash your dishes immediately after using them. Um, and the supporting evidence for that conclusion is the claims that um, leaving dirty dishes in the sink can bring bugs into the house and um, that leaving dirty dishes in the sink can leave stains in the sink. Notice that those are really two different claims. Even though they're kind of packed together in one sentence, they're providing two different kinds of evidence for the conclusion that you should wash your dishes immediately after using them. And for that reason, it's really best if we separate them out and list them as two different claims. Now, there are two things, at least, that I'd like you to take away from this example if you haven't noticed this already. So one thing is, um, that I did uh, adjust the wording slightly in order to um, articulate what are the two claims. I had to kind of um, add in uh, a second statement of leaving dirty dishes in the sink does X, right? Um, so that the premise one and premise two together uh, are a bit wordier. They're a bit, there's a bit more 
there's there are more words there total in premise one and premise two as I've summarized them than there are in the original passage. Um, I I ha again, you, you have some flexibility when you summarize arguments in standard form, but the purpose of summarizing arguments in standard form is to clarify the way that the argument works. It's to clarify what pieces of evidence are being offered for justification for the conclusion. Um, and so because you're trying to clarify that, it makes sense in this case to be a little bit wordier and a little bit more explicit about what exactly is being claimed in the premises. That's the rationale for um, expanding what's said in the original argument, just very slightly, just to clarify what are those two pieces of evidence, okay? Now, the second point I'd like you to take away from this example is notice that the conclusion, you may have, you probably have already noticed this based on pr previous examples we looked at. Notice that the conclusion is stated first in the passage, okay? Now, the conclusion of, a, of an argument can be stated anywhere in the passage. You cannot rely on where um, this, on, the, on just the ordering of the sentences in the original passage to tell you which of those um, sentences express premises and which of those sentences express conclusions. So the conclusion of an argument will sometimes appear at the beginning of a passage, it will sometimes appear at the end of a passage, it will sometimes appear in the middle of a passage. Okay, so you can't, you, you need to think about the justificatory structure, that is, which claims are being offered as justification for other claims, which claims are being offered as evidence for other claims. Um, that's the question you need to ask when you're trying to identify which of those claims are premises and which are conclusions. Why don't you try one more example um, and then we'll, we'll end this, uh, this video. So go ahead and read over this passage and try to summarize the argument in this passage in standard form. That means put the conclusion at the end and the premises that support it above that conclusion. And again, um, give you, I'll give you the clue that there's only one conclusion in this passage, okay? So, Go ahead and do that and I'll give you a moment to pause the video. When you start the video again, I'll give you the correct answer. So go ahead and pause the video and try to put this passage, the argument in this passage, into standard form. Okay. So I think that this is the best way to summarize the argument in standard form. The first question to ask yourself when you're trying to do this is what's the conclusion of the passage? That makes it easy to organize everything else. If you can identify what's the main conclusion that everything else in the passage is ultimately um, intended to provide evidence for, then that will allow you to put that claim, the conclusion at the bottom of your standard form summary and then start filling in the um, premises above that conclusion. So in this case, it's pretty clear that the conclusion is um, we should pass laws that penalize giving birth to new children until every child currently alive has a home, and the two other claims are being offered as evidence for that. Okay, um, one way to explain why that's the best standard form summary, why why that conclusion is the best one to, uh, or that claim is the best one to um, label and treat as the conclusion, is if you try to treat any of the other claims in the passage as the conclusion, uh, it, the standard form summary really won't make sense. It really won't make a good argument or a, a reasonable argument. It won't. It doesn't. Won't make sense to treat any of those other claims as something that. Um, is being supported by the rest of the claims in the passage. Okay, you can go ahead and try it if you want. Try to treat there are many children without families to care for them as the conclusion of the passage. It won't work. It doesn't make sense, right? Likewise, try to treat this would further help to curb the trend of overpopulation as the conclusion, as the um, as the thing argued for by everything else in the passage. It doesn't work. Um, it's not that 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 the author is trying to convince us that passing laws that penalize giving birth to new children um, would curb the trend of overpopulation. It's rather that they're using the claim that it would curb the trend of overpopulation as evidence to conclude that we should pass laws that penalize giving birth to new children. Okay, I might 
be a little bit tricky to grab onto. But that, um, if you again, if you try to organize it another way and you think carefully about is that what's being said, uh, I think you'll see that this standard form summary that I've got on this slide is really the best one of the passage. Now, one more very small point. I have put square brackets around the um, text that I've inserted in premise two. Um, you don't technically have to do that, but I find it useful sometimes just to clarify what part of the summary is my own wording rather than the original wording in the passage. You know, where, where I've made small adjustments, I'll sometimes indicate that by putting the adjusted part in brackets or the added part in brackets. So you don't have to do that, but you can do that.